Hello, 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 friends, and welcome to an extra special, ultra, super mega exciting stream today. Fletch, are you as pumped as I am for what we're talking about today? I mean, how can I not be after an intro <laughs> like that? Like, uh, I, uh, is there any other answer besides yes? <laughs> like... Yes, obviously. Uh, we hope you guys are just as pumped as we are uh, who are joining us on the, on the stream at the moment. Everybody in the chat, hello, welcome, welcome. Uh, because in case you guys haven't seen what the stream was about today or you haven't looked at Microsoft.com this morning or any of your friendly retailer pages, we have some big news it is official. The Surface Laptop Studio is now coming to Australia and New Zealand. So uh, while we were sleeping, my Fitbit told me I had an excellent sleep last night, which is always <laughs> nice. Uh, while I was busy having my excellent sleep, uh, the computer gremlins were busy in the background. So the Surface Laptop Studio is now available for pre-order uh, in Australia and New Zealand across all of our retailer sites, which I know a lot of people have been waiting for this news. I think it's probably been one of the most common things we've been asked for the last couple of months, right, Fletch? Oh, it, it really is something that people have been dying to wait for. Yeah, absolutely right. The amount of times we get asked it is uh, is kind of, uh, I, I forget, you know, when, when <laughs> not everything launches at once, people still are excited about products that uh, aren't necessarily available yet. So, yeah, um. I'm feeling like, you know, we get to do one of those things where we get to give the people what they want. It's it's one of those uh, very nice days. 100%. So speaking of giving the people what they want, I think that it would be a real disservice to everybody to not start the stream off with the Laptop Studio launch Ooh, video. It's so a let's, banger. It's such a banger. So <laughs> let's do that one right now. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm glad that I'm not on screen when we watch those videos yeah. because no matter how many times I watch it, there are still some parts that just excite me right to my core. I love the, you know, the throwback for the fans. Oh. Uh, if any of you guys have been around since Surface Studio launched, that was the same song used and at exactly the same part in the video. Yeah. It like goes silent for a second and then it goes from laptop, it shows you that new hinge going, you know, to <laughs> stage mode, then to studio mode and oh. Incredible. It's the all-time best intro music for, for Surface, right? Definitely got to be the all-time best. The best. Literally in, like, 
a Willy Wonka Wonderland. Uh, you know, I don't even, I associate that song probably more now with Surface than I do Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which is strange. Yeah. Um, You're not the only one there. It's uh, <laughs> oh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. What's that? It's, it's the Surface song. It's the Surface song now. Absolutely. <laughs> so obviously, not only is the video epic, but it really shouts out to some really epic things about the device itself. So we're going to kind of move through a few different ones that really stand out to us. Yes, Chris, delicious specs. I love that a lot. Take my money. Absolutely. So as we kind of said in the beginning of the stream, it's now available for pre-order and it will be sent out and hitting retail shelves on the 1st of March. Uh, so we have a month, uh, if you're a keen bean like I am, like Fletcher's, like Lisa is, uh, to get in there and get ready uh, to, you know, get that product on day one. Really, really exciting. I yeah. As we were saying before, there's oh. been a lot of questions about this, so we're pumped to see it. But where should we get started on talking about this magnificent product, Fletch? That is that is such a hard question to to answer there, <laughs> Hannah. I uh, there's so much that I want to want to dive into. Should we should we do the specs to to roll that off? Since you know Chris mentioned it, they did stand yeah. out on the the video. Absolutely, cool. give the people what they want, Fletch. That's what we're here to do. <laughs> Let's start with the specs. Absolutely. This this is like the juiciest of uh, surfaces when it comes to talking about specs. It's uh, very, very Our exciting to do. most powerful surface ever, right? Most powerful yeah. surface device ever. It absolutely is. And it is, honestly, it's quite amazing like how much power this has from, you know, the next most logical uh, device, which was that book free, right? Um, moving on to this, the specs have had a massive upgrade and it starts by, you know, just some of those generic things that we can throw out there and people are like, that sounds cool, but what does it mean? So, you know, it's got 11th gen Intel processors, it's got the latest generation of uh, NVIDIA graphics cards available in these or integrated um, Intel graphics, but, you know, that's great. What does it actually mean? <laughs> So when we look at the the processor that's now available on these devices, they've introduced that 11th gen processor. Uh, and the cool thing about this is it's not just the 11th gen processor, it's something called the H series processor. Uh, the reason like I want to point this out is because these processors are actually built for like entry level gaming, for like enthusiast gaming. Uh, and they're totally different to what you would get on some of the other Surface devices, right? So normally on a Surface device, you get something called a U-series processor, and that stands for ultra-portable, whereas H-series stands for ultra-portable gaming. So this isn't just a powerful uh, processor in a machine. It is really the most powerful processor that we could fit in this body so that we can back up what people actually want to do with this machine, right? Which is to do a bit of gaming, which is to do some video editing, some audio editing. This is really, you know, a lot of the bread and butter of, of these type of Surface devices, right, Hannah? For sure. And I'm so glad that you're here, Fletch, because <laughs> I didn't know some of that and I could not have explained <laughs> it as well as you could. So I'm I'm really glad that you're here to, you know, add those extra layers into what these specs are about and why they're designed in the way they are. So what other things are important to call out on this device, Fletch? Uh, so the other thing that I'd call out um, would be two things, really. One is every, to, um, every configuration you can get starts with 16 gig RAM which mm. is amazing. Yes. Again, I was really pumped about that too. <laughs> I think like everyone who's probably listening in is going to be pumped, right? Like, I don't know why, but I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't either. Normally we, we start at 8 gig, but no, we're like, we're making that really clear. Like this is our power laptop. This is for people yeah. who need that grunt. And I love it. It's like, let's not mix our words. Let's just make that <laughs> statement. <laughs> Absolutely, because if you want to go up to the, mm. the configure now in the top right-hand side view, Fletch, yeah, that will show us exactly what's available. Uh, so these are the New Zealand prices. Uh, Australia are slightly different just because obviously our dollars aren't the same. Um, but, yeah, so starting off uh, at i5 and then i7, but kicking off with 16 gig of RAM, I think that that is, like you say, Fletch, really putting money where our mouth is in terms of, who this device is for and what we expect people to be using it for and then making sure that their device will be capable of doing exactly that. 
Absolutely. Like, I wouldn't want to go in and edit a video about 16 gig of RAM, to be honest. It would just be, yeah. it would just be too hard, like, in terms yeah. of not too hard, too time consuming, really. Yeah. Um, uh, Chris has just asked, is there going to be any heat throttling issues due to the, the H core CPU? Um, these H core CPUs are designed for thinner bodies now. So, look, I don't think you'd get have any, any proper issues coming from it. Uh, will it get warm? Yeah, it's probably going to get a little, little bit warm with all the the beef in there. But the the cooling is pretty, pretty intense on these machines, and I would, I would say they, you know, um, because of some of the controls that are, are built in, like um, into these machines, it's not going to overheat unless you get rid of, you know, some of those like turboing controls, which uh, not an average person would would be able to do. Mm. Um, Absolutely, so really and I just want to. I really want to shout out there as well that that thermal cooling was a really big focus for this generation of Surface. So we've seen it in Pro 8 as well. Uh, and there's some really cool videos from Microsoft Mechanics that explain this better uh, than I am right now. But it's, it's kind of set into this really cool loop to mm. push air out uh, of the vents. But what's really clever about the way that it does that is it's designed to do that in a way that's not going to impact your performance and what you're doing. So I think mm. a really good example of the way that that's designed is, you know, if if your device is, if you've got heaps of things open, if you're on a Teams call and it's kind of really busy, it's not going to go like full throttle fan mode while you're talking on a call or something like that because it's kind of acoustically engineered and designed to work around what you're doing instead of just be like, I can't handle it, so I've got to let this all out right now, uh, which I think is really cool. I think, you know, obviously there's parts of devices that, you know, there's some things that it's got to do what it's got to do, mm. but it can't always impact what you're doing and how you want to use your device. So like I say, check out the Microsoft Mechanics video on that because there's some some really awesome... Such a good uh, shout. Yeah, really awesome footage in there that actually like shows you how that works internally in the device as well. Yeah, if you want to learn things that you've you've never heard of, that's that's where we go to learn them. Those Microsoft Mechanic videos, they're really 100%. good. One hundred percent. I don't want to talk about specs all day though, Hannah, because I know there's there's a lot more. But there is one last thing to shout out, and uh, I, I think we would be in trouble if we didn't shout out the uh, graphics cards that are available on this. So um, there's two ways you get them. You get them integrated, so that you know is built into the machine. That's usually to do with um, the chipset that you've got in there, so that that uh, processor, and then you've got dedicated, which is um, the Nvidia ones. And to be honest, on both ends, this device has has great graphics. Uh, so you either get Intel Xe graphics cards or Intel X graphics. Those are integrated, but they're really, really impressive. They're um, one of the biggest jumps from, uh, you know, the previous version to the newest version of those integrated graphics that there's ever been. It's literally four times as powerful as what we, we used to have on Surface devices, and it's getting the world excited. The, the people who are as techy as me who are really into deep diving into specs, it's like like ultra um premium gaming is is nearly available on on incredibly thin machines even thinner than the studio uh but then you've got the the 3050 ti which means it's the latest generation ge4 so you can be comfortable there and the ti means it's the extra powerful version of the 3050 so it's really got uh a good amount of dedicated graphics power to really help with videos and gaming and everything else as well uh and i think you know that is enough talk on spec before we melt brains hannah yeah <laughs> Ooh, melt your minds. but i think that that's such an important thing to focus on right because as we said in the beginning this mm. is the most powerful surface device we have ever made which is really really exciting but you know we all like to talk about the form factors of these devices and that's something that is so exciting about the new surface laptop studio is that this is all new and like you know we were watching in that video just that moment where they dropped that hinge i'm so excited to get my hands on this i don't think i can 
express my level of excitement enough. We're really hoping to get our hands on one so we can do another unboxing uh, stream when we get it. So, you know, if you guys would be keen to mm. see that, drop it in the chat. Let us know. Uh, give me a hand so we can get one in my house or in Fletcher's house so we can make sure that happens for you guys. Um, <laughs> but <me>. I. <laughs> <laughs> pick me, pick me, pick all of us, please. Um, but I just, I can't wait to see how that feels, you know, to bring it down from that laptop mode into that stage mode, which is what we call this kind of area. Um, yeah, that one there. So that stage mode and then studio mode when it's right down. Uh, and some of the, the really key benefits of this design and why it is this way is so you get the full power of the device, no matter what mode you want to use it in. So mm. if you are wanting to use this in Photoshop to do some drawing or illustrating or, you know, some great new apps like Adobe Fresco and stuff like that, if that's how you want to use it, you're getting the full amount of grunt uh, from, you know, from your device, which is really, mm. really cool. You know, I've always been a huge fan of Surface Book. I really love the design of that product. Uh, but of course, as you guys know, when you detach the tablet, you lost some of the power because that power lived in the base. Sure, you get it back Absolutely. when you reattach it and move it around. But I think there's there's so many benefits to it being there and available all of the time. Right, Fletch? Yeah, I, I was just having a conversation with a, a, another really close friend of mine literally the other day on the form factor of this thing because he's in exactly that boat, Hannah. He's uh, mm. got a Surface Book free. Um, he's a website designer. Um, he does a lot of graphic design and video editing as well in his role. And he loves his book free, right? But mm. he has never really detached the screen, um, mm. even though he wants to. Like, he never yeah. detaches the screen, turns it around and lies it down, even yeah. though that's what he ideally wants to do in meetings, just because it's not as accessible as what it yeah. is on this device. So I literally just showed him this little slider and his mind was absolutely blown. <laughs> like, he he thinks the, the um, uh, tablet mode, or sorry, uh, studio mode studio, is going to be yeah. great uh, for taking notes and meetings and stuff. Uh, and he just loves how it's just so much more obvious um, how to do it all. It, it, there's not like so many ways you can do it that people almost get intimidated. Intimidated is right there. Yeah, for sure. I love that a lot. And I think Fletch, a, a comment that I know that we've got for many, many years now is about mm. pen storage on Surface oh, devices. Yeah. Uh, you know, with Book 3, with Surface, you know, Pro 4 or the Surface Pro 5 um, through to the Pro 7, it always had that side where you could magnetize it to the side of the screen. Um, and while that's a really great alternative, I've totally like knocked one off into the abyss while I've been, you know, in stores visiting, like taking photos of displays and stuff. And off it goes. I didn't realize... But here, here it lives under the lip of this device. And it's a really strong magnetic connection. And because of where it is, because that slim pen two is now flat, you're not going to knock that out accidentally. And what is the best part of where it lives now, Fletch? Well, uh, I think the best part <laughs> is it, it does um, charging, right, Hannah? Yes, it's I'm so glad charging. that you just kind of like looked at me yeah. for a second and was like, what do you I want like... me to say, lady? <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly think that is like so awesome. Um, you know, the Pro X, then the type cover there, it would uh, do charging as well. That like is just the best thing ever. I'm currently in the situation where I've run out of quadruple A batteries at home and I need to go get some more. So like, please another reason give us these devices give us the pen paul wants one too i can't swing what he <laughs> wants but he wants one <laughs> so amazing because i as you guys know because i unboxed it on the stream live with you guys i have a surface pro 8 uh with that new signature uh keyboard with the slim pen 2 and the little home for it to charge and I've really loved this experience. Mm. So there has been some really key updates made to the pen as well. Um, so that Slim Pen 1 to Slim Pen 2 design. Uh, for me, the favorite thing that's, two of the favorite things that have changed is they've moved the button. It used to be on the side of the pen. Now it's on the flat edge. So you can't push it by mistake. Like it definitely has to be an intentional push of the button, which is great. Um, and the other thing I really like is that they've actually changed the pen tip. So if you see a Slim Pen 1 and Slim Pen 2 side by 
side-by-side, side, you'll notice that the, the point is more precise, which allows for, you know, more precise drawing, that zero gravity ink um, that we can get on the Laptop Studio and the Pro 8 as well. Uh, and of course, how could I not mention haptic feedback? Oh my oh. gosh. Oh I didn't my. know I needed it, but now I have it. I can never go back. Just like Windows 11, right? Like we were talking about this just the other day, Fletch, where Windows 11 is so amazing and I've really just, I've just taken to it. I love it. It's on all of my devices. And now every time I look at Windows 10, I'm just like, oh, it feels like so long ago. So much has changed in that short amount of time, right? Yeah, I like it really, really has. I just like I, i'm so excited about haptic in this pen to be able to feel like you're actually writing on a bit of paper you know you've always got that little subtle resistance to to mm. draw along it but it, it changes with the pen input you've got so it makes it feel more like a pencil or a pen or a felt tip uh depending yeah. on what you've got going like that natural experience that we're used to is just so amazing and with Windows 11 making it really easy to use, um, even easier than Windows 10 was to use the pen in like any text box. Like, mm. I, I think I'm going to upgrade to like a, another level when when it comes to using the pen with this device. One hundred percent. I I really really love it. Um, and you know, I've definitely heard some comments of like, but it's not like a traditional like pen kind of style. You know, it is that that writer's uh, what's it called? <laughs> I don't know. Do you know oh, it just on? reminds like me of use, the like one like builders use. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> it reminds me of the pencil builders use. So is that style? And honestly, it took me maybe a couple of goes, a couple mm. of goes to be like, oh yeah, this feels really natural now. And I think having that help of the the haptic feedback in the pen, it's just really, really mm. awesome. I love that, Sam. I'm so glad that you're excited, my friend. Um, they will be coming to our stores really, really soon. So, you know, be ready to head out on display as of the 1st of March. Um, but while we are talking about haptic feedback in the pen, where else is there haptic feedback? <gasps> the trackpad has a... This is so exciting. I, I just think this is, like, the best thing ever. It's new, it's fresh, it's exciting. So I'm getting, like overly excited about the the trackpad with haptic feedback but i think it's just so cool um it's yeah. like to me I, I i expect once i'm used to this to it being the same as going from a controller when you're gaming with haptic feedback to, to something with none like yeah. i i think this is going to be just so incredibly like exciting to use and it's going to really help, I think, when it comes to using fingers, gestures and stuff like that to, you know, really letting you know that you're actually using the trackpad, not accidentally scrolling on it. You're going to have, you know, that feeling, that feedback coming through. So, yeah, I, I think this is a very exciting and it's going to be something leading the way in this area. 100% and you know I love mm. that comparison to like an Xbox controller, right, Fletch? Like mm. playing Forza Horizon 5 that game in my eyes that game would not be the same without the haptic feedback on my controller oh, no. like it, it was amazing in like previous ver versions of forza horizon but in five oh my goodness like hooning around mexico going from being on a road to being in the jungle to driving through water to crashing into a fence um or whatever it may be especially the different terrains that feeling you get the yeah. second that you go from a road to gravel it's it's like nothing else and i do not think that game would be the same without that level of attention to detail so you know i'm already getting that amazing experience uh while drawing with a pen um you know with various states of lockdown and stuff we've been in i've picked up a new hobby and that's doing like some digital artwork stuff um and Ooh. it's amazing it's absolutely amazing the experience i get there so not only having it in the pen now but in that trackpad um i'm so pumped i'm so glad that this is an experience that we're investing in heck yeah uh oh, it's it's so so exciting it's almost exciting as you know getting quad omnisonic speakers on this oh. beast uh you know like we probably drool over omnisonic speakers more than uh well clearly more than your average people 
possibly yep. more than necessary, but they are just so amazing. I will, <laughs> I will never, ever forget this, Fletch, because uh, obviously the Omni Sonic speakers first came out with the first uh, ever Surface laptop. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. you know, back in the day where we all worked in an office together where we didn't have to work remotely, we always had a song of the day in our team. Each person got to, like, pick their <laughs> song and we'd, like, you know, just start off our day right by, like, blasting a tune. And we'd always play it through the Surface laptop because we were just so blown away and impressed by what that device sounded like right like in an office with I think there was about six of us in our team at the time we just like pop it in the middle mm. of the room we'd have our own little dance oh. party everyone else in the office hated it but we <laughs> loved it um so you know uh, not one not two but four omnisonic speakers inside like inside mm. the body you can't see them there's no speaker grates there's none of those things like the design the attention to detail and Surface products is something that I'm always mind blown by. Mm. And like, I'm quite spoiled. I'm quite used to it now. But when I compare it to other devices where you can see screws, oh. where you can see speaker grates, I'm just like, oh, I forgot about that. Like, that's just not a yeah. part of my experience anymore. Right, Fletch? Yeah, absolutely. It's like the seamless design and, and the way it looks is just, yeah, it's, it's weird when you start to like, be able to see all the creases and the nuts and the bolts on computers. Uh, I find it weird when I listen to the other devices too, and they either like don't have bass or the louder they get, just the more tinnier they get. Or yeah. when there's clearly sound that's meant to be going, you know, from left to right, and you yeah. can't hear it because it's just a single strip of of a speaker. It's not like you know the, the laptop has two or. Yeah, as you know, multiple channels, multiple speakers means that you mm. get like a bit of directional sound. And uh, that's something that like uh, really has stood out to me recently going from Surface laptops, which only have two, mm. not even four, to yeah. a device that's just got a single strip. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And we know that that was something that people really asked about um, with Surface Book. Um, they're mm. just like, oh, it's really great, but I wish the speakers were better. So I feel like yeah. this this really is a product that they've looked really closely at all mm. of the things that weren't quite there in previous generations to really improve and build upon those things. And, you know, as we were talking about what specs are in this device, looking at, you know, what people are realistically using this device for and giving them what they need to do that, which I think is really, really important. And I think, you know, if we want to use this design for editing, if we want to use this design for gaming, um, you know, this product, it's really important to, you know, be inclusive of that. Like we've got our, our good friend mm. uh, and wonderful colleague, Mr. Tim Young in the chat. Uh, and, you know, as someone who's an editor for a living, I'm sure you know how important it is to have good speakers on a laptop, right? Um, because sometimes if you edit in a nice pair of headphones uh, and then you like listen to it just on a laptop or just on your phone, the sound is mm. completely different, right? So having a device where you can test all of those things in one is going to be incredibly important. Yeah, I um, yeah, it, it's so important. Uh, just to quickly answer Sam's question, yeah, um, this is more or less replacing the 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 um, book free in the range. Um, so that's why you'll see them all going discount. Um, are we? Are we? Is there anything else you want to like absolutely shout out on this device, Hannah? Because I got a bonus one. Yeah. Oh yes, please, Fletch. Like just a totally underrated feature. It's not necessarily new to the book, right? But just being able to charge through the USB C port. Can I? Can yes. I give that a little bit of love? Yes, I've been doing that. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've been charging my devices through the USB-C port more than my Surface device of lately because uh, my my wife has a device that uses a USB-C charger for work. So I've either just been kidnapping her or just leaving it on the bench overnight uh, with my phone charger. And yeah. like just the like sneaky, like underrated thing that I think should be totally mentioned to, to more people. Like that is a really really cool experience and uh you know we yeah it's it's just underrated and underutilized just wanted 100%. to do a bonus and it's always good 
you know, like if we're, we haven't done it for a while because of the situation the world's in, <laughs> but if we're going away for a couple of days for a training event, right? Like having to take yeah. all your devices alongside all of your charges, it's just a bit much. Um, so being able to, you know, have that as an option, just in case you find yourself somewhere without your Surface Connect, um, that's really important. So through the USB-C, yeah. it does like, it does just trickle charge. Yeah. Um, but like you said, Fletch, totally underrated uh, and something that I just think everyone needs to know. Yeah. Everyone needs so to know. So I've been using a USB-C Samsung fast charger on a book free mm. and that mm -hmm. that will be enough to charge it while I'm using it. So like trickle charge, but don't let that think it doesn't charge it yep. at all. Or it takes like five hours. It's, it's fairly yeah. impressive. Nice. That is awesome. Sorry, because... I'll stop derailing with my No, I th I'll thank, stop. thank goodness <laughs> you mentioned it, Fletch, because we haven't mentioned the battery life on this device, which I think is super ultra mega impressive. Ooh. Up to 19 hours. Up to 19, 19. hours of battery life, which is mind-blowing. That mind is not a typo. It is not a typo, <laughs> friends. So up to 19 hours. Of course, that can be impacted by what it is you're doing on the device, but it's been tried and tested in lots of different ways. So up to 19 hours, but this device is also supported by fast charging as well through that Surface Connect port. So you can get up to 80% battery uh, from low to up to 80% in less than an hour. So, you know, if, if you're like mm. us, if you're kind of shooting around different places or if you're wanting to use it for school or uni or whatever it may be and you just want to give it a quick charge over your lunch break or whatever it may be uh, and then go to using it uh, off, off your charger, um, nice and quick you can give it that extra little bit of juice as well. Boom. Boom. Can I just mention wow. one more thing? One more thing. We've got, yeah. One more. And Let's do it. One more. One more. I got, and then we're going to call it a day. Do you have one more too? No, no. I did a bonus. So you get a bonus, okay. right? My right. bonus one is the fact it's 14.4 inch display. And yes. I find this really interesting. So there's lots of cool things about the display. So it goes up to 120 Ooh. hertz, which is amazing. But so it's 14.4 inch. And what I'm really excited about this, like obviously that's kind of a strange and like very specific number and design. But it... What it's designed to be like is giving you the feel of a 15-inch device, but in the body of a 13-inch device. So it's still nice and portable. Like, it's as portable as it can be size-wise with the most screen real estate it can possibly give you. So I'm really excited about that. I think that that's a really, like, fun little fact, and I think that it's, yeah. it really is going to make a difference. Um because I, I love a 13-inch device myself. I have a 15-inch laptop. I know I've definitely mentioned this before. I've got a 15-inch Surface Laptop 4. I absolutely love using it at my desk. But as soon as I have to use it not at my desk, I start questioning what I might do. Um, recently, I've got a new bag just for this laptop. So I'm pretty pumped about that. Um, but, you know, it, it is really important when you're considering buying a device for yourself or if, you know, if you're one of our retail friends in the chat, uh, if a customer's coming in and asking you know, like what device will be suit me, I think where are you going to use it? You know, first of all, what well, are you going to use it for? But where are you going to be using it is such an important question to make yeah. sure we get them the right device in the Surface family and the right form factor. So that's what I love so much about this, that, you know, there's so many things it can do. If you want an yeah. ultra, power, a ultra powerful device that's still portable, um, that you can use in all of these different kinds of modes, I think the Surface Laptop Studio is, you know, it really is kind of the first and only of its kind right now and such a kind of specific cool design. Uh, I'm really, really, really excited to, to see this hit our shelves uh, on the 1st of March in Australia and New Zealand. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm super excited. I'm excited Sam has my back. Like, always love seeing <laughs> Sam in the chat. <laughs> he always back up what we're saying. Uh, and it was, man, it was just good talking about that device because it's one that I could nerd about for, for even longer, but I know that that's uh, not really an option for us because we're trying to keep our streams a little bit more short, sharp and snappy. I know, I know, which is something that's, you know, a lot of you guys have met us in person. So, you know, that's really hard for us. Mm. Um, but of course, you know, we just, we had to jump on. We had to share this amazing, exciting news with you guys. We know it's been, you know, highly requested for a few months now and it's official, guys. It's official. Surface Laptop Studio is now available for pre-order in Australia and New Zealand and it will be hitting our shelves on the 
1st of March. So I've said it a few times and I've said it again, but I'm so excited. I really cannot wait for us to be able to show this one off. Um, so many people are asking about it. So much hype, Sam. Hell yeah. Thank you. Um, really pumped. So we will be doing another stream about Laptop Studio. Don't you guys worry. As I mentioned earlier, fingers crossed. I'm really hopeful that we can get one at some point in time in the very near future to do an unboxing for you guys because I think that'll be a lot of fun. Um, and I just want one. I really want one. I really want to feel that laptop screen move. That's what I'm most excited about. So, <laughs> you know, Sam, when you want to rise and store, let us know, buddy. Let us know how that feels. Absolutely. I cannot wait. If you guys do want to learn more about this amazing product, uh, before it hits your shelves, I have to shout out, there's some really great content for it over on Expert Zone. If you're one of our retail pros joining us, keep it locked to Expert Zone. There's lots of great content uh, for you to familiarize yourself. So obviously we've got our Surface accreditation, but there's some great introducing courses for each Surface device, as well as some quick reference guides, uh, which I found really useful. So I think that you guys will too. Uh, but Fletch, do you have any final words for the people? No, no, I wish <laughs> no. I wish I could. I wish I could instill wisdom, but that is quite the ass. So yeah, no, thanks for <laughs> just uh, inviting me along. I, I love doing uh, streams with you, Hannah, and uh, what a, like, can't really ask for more than, than on a, such a I cool know. device. Such a cool device. All righty, guys. Thank you so much for coming along and tuning in. Uh, keep it locked to all of our socials, which will appear on the end screen. But thanks for joining us today, and we will catch you on the next one.